Hello everybody, welcome. If you are new here, my name is Hanya and today I'm going to be talking about two topics in a very similar category. So it's products that I've hit pan on, which obviously I love and that's the reason that I've hit pan on them. Or another reason which is very, very um, towards my palettes really. And then the other topic that I'm going to be talking about is products that I've completely used up and the packaging is ready to be recycled or thrown away if it's not recyclable so that's what we're going to be talking about today however if you are not already subscribed I'd really love if you'd hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos and if you'd like to I've left my Instagram link in the description box where you can click on it and you can follow me on a day-to-day -day basis see what I get up to I usually talk about the makeup that I have on my face on my stories I don't post that often on my feed anymore but sometimes I do so you can check me out over there if you so wish. Without further ado though, let's get into today's video. Starting with products that I've hit pan on then. So I have an eyeshadow palette here and this is actually the very first eyeshadow palette that I received and I used this continuously. This is the Naked 3 by Urban Decay and I used to watch a hell of a lot of old school YouTube like when people first started posting on YouTube and when this palette came out I was like I have to have it and these are the these are the shades that I've hit pan on so one is a brow bone shade which is a very very pale shade and as you can see like I can I, I think I gave up on the shade because I can't get into the edges of it. So this I used to use as a under uh, my brow bone shade and also sometimes in the inner corner as a matte highlighter in there and I used to love this. And then the other one that I used, this shade is called I think Limit and it's like a mid-tone rosy brown. So obviously this has got all rosy tones in. I asked my mom and my sister for this for my birthday and they kindly got it for me and I was ecstatic because this was the first palette that I received and also it was the first high-end makeup product that I received so and and on top of that I relied solely on this palette for all of my eyeshadow looks for many many years I mean I only had really this for a very very long time um a because I was a student and b because the makeup world wasn't that big at this point it was like basically urban decay was like at the top of its game along with mac everybody was raging about those those two brands and then it was just whatever you could find in the drugstore but when i got this i used this and this alone so obviously i've hit pan on these two products but as you can see from the packaging i also have some serious dents in some of the other shades and i love this palette i haven't used it for a long time now and um, sometimes i'll go back to it and i'll just have a little play with the shades but i'm mainly keeping this for sentimental value because obviously it is a tried and true and it was with me in my times of just experimenting very first getting into makeup learning how to blend all that fun stuff so i can definitely say i enjoyed this palette talking of very first getting into makeup and what was existing in the drugstore i have two of the balm products i've had these for well over five years and they're still going good they don't smell funky at all but i do have new ones of these that i use but i kept these again for sentimental value because this was the first bronzer that i ever had and this was the first highlighter that i ever had so the <clears throat> Betty Luminizer which is the bronzer has a big hefty dent in it and these have a lot of product in here in here there's 8.5 grams of product um, and obviously you can see that is pretty much done <laughs> you can see a good heap of pan in there but as I said there's a fresh one open in my collection and this I still use. This is one of my tried and true products. I use it every single summer. It has a beautiful bronze gold hue to it with some beautiful sparkly sh shimmers in there. And it just gives the most amazing glow to the face when the summertime hits and my skin tone gets a little deeper. And I just love this product. So yeah, absolutely. I'm not even surprised that I hit pan in that. And uh, obviously there is the Betty Luminizer as well. This is the highlighting shade from the balm. Many, many people had this as their first highlighting shade and myself included. And that is what it looks like. Obviously it's an old product, so you can see some hard pan in there, but the size of that pan is huge. And I love this. I used to 
I used to build this up like <laughs> like I said this was my only highlighter so I used to dig into this when I was at weddings or something and I wanted a really gleaming highlighter I would build this up to death so it's no surprise that I hit pan in this and again I still love it it's a tried and true and it's and this was before its time this was like ahead of its time the the betty uh, luminizer was because nobody was really doing highlighters and if you wanted a shimmer on your cheek this is what you'd go for so it's nostalgic the next product that i've hit pan on is a kat von d product and this is the shade and light palette so this is a very well-known product again um in that era of like 2007 and things where youtube was really hitting off um this is a palette which has three different shades of contour and then also three different powder shades so you had like a light shade here a banana shade here and then this is a peachy one that didn't really match my skin tone but as you can see the banana shade and the light shade i used to actually mix the two together um and i have completely finish them up um i used to love absolutely love these uh shades here as well because this was a really good cool tone um contour shade and i used to love using those but for the longest time these two were actually my setting powders because i had no setting powder um so those were acting as my setting powder underneath my eyes and wherever else um and i've used them completely up but i have to say this whole palette was amazing and it's such a shame about the state of kat von d because their products like some of their products were real real hits with people and for those of those people that still use kat von d they are still products that come out that are people really seem to enjoy but myself i don't buy from kat von d anymore and this is actually the only kat von d product i own um, and as you can see i used a lot of it up I have two eyeshadow palettes here and surprisingly, I mean not surprisingly, they're both Anastasia palettes. Now Anastasia is really well known for having a very soft formula and people like fly through their eyeshadow palettes like no tomorrow. Um, so this is the Prism palette from Anastasia Beverly Hills and as you can see the shade that I've hit pan on is the black shade in here. Absolutely gorgeous palette. I mean you can see some hefty dents in the shimmer shades which is very very common for Anastasia um, palettes. Um, surprisingly I don't actually use this black all that much I think I hit pan in this when I was doing a lot of like face painting and creative makeup on YouTube and I needed to fill in like black spaces on the face paint with black and obviously this is a very soft very very pigmented black so this worked well and I think that's why I've hit pan in there overall I do love this palette and it's got some of the most beautiful shades in here I always feel so inspired when I look at the old school and Anastasia palettes and prism is one of those that always makes me feel excited to use it so it's not surprising to me that I hit pan in there um but the black shade mainly is because I used to do like crazy face painting stuff on Instagram and that's why I hit pan in there and then the other palette is the Riviera palette from Anastasia and surprisingly to me the shade that I've actually hit pan on is the bronze shade in here and it's called Yatch and this is actually a shade that I don't use all that often but I think because it's just so soft and so so like loose like when you touch the shade it actually starts to break down and you have to like really use a tightly bristled brush to pick it up and pack it on the lid because it's so so soft it just you just fly through these shades and this is by far one not one of my most used shades in here at all so for this to have got hit pan it tells you something about Anastasia's formula but again this is a palette that I love I used it mainly throughout this year's spring and summer and I absolutely adore it some of the shades in here are a bit difficult to work with um in terms of like the purple and i don't really touch like the silvery shade in here that one up there but i mean i hit pan in one of them so not that it says i love it <laughs> but i do love the palette overall and the last product that i hit pan is the it, <laughs> and the last product that i hit pan in is this very very grubby grubby looking nars duo this is a cream blush and bronzer duo so in here you've got 
NARS um, Orgasm in a cream blush and also NARS South Beach bronzer in a cream bronzer formula. I got this ooh, six years ago. I think it was six years ago in the very first IMATS that I attended and I picked this up. I think I wanted the orgasm powder formula but they'd sold out by the time I got there and this was the last one of the cream blushes that was available and that's what I picked up and obviously I've loved it. I've hit pan in it. It is way too old to use anymore but I love this. Sometimes I will just have a little look at it and be like swatching it on my hand and things like that because i absolutely love it but i haven't picked it up i've got so many other blushes that look exactly the same as nars orgasm does now so it's really really easily dupable but i think this was one of the first cream blush formulas that i'd picked up because i was into very very light makeup with tinted moisturizer and like cream products all around and i absolutely loved it again another one of my very first high-end product purchases okay so those are all the products that i've hit pan in i have a box here of all the products that i have finished so i'm gonna go through them with you um two of the most boring ones out of the way my cellar water i go through so so many of these i switch between garnier and the simple micellar water just depending on whichever one boots or superdrug has a deal on when i'm purchasing so i will always go through them i buy a mix of the plain one and the oil-based one the oil-based one is really good for getting off like really stubborn stubborn makeup so um i always buy two of these one in simple and one in oil based just in case because some mascaras are devilish to get off talking about mascaras i have two mascaras here um that are empties the first is the lash paradise from l'oreal i think this is my third or fourth tube of this i really like this mascara but i'm not going to repurchase it i think after this time's use i just found that it just clumped on me and it got very very dry it this is a dupe for the i think the better than sex mascara from Too faced but i've used that as well and i think i prefer that i'd rather pay the extra i think nine pounds to buy that um, because it doesn't dry out as quick as this one and I think it doesn't get as clumpy as this one this one I continuously have to um, make sure I clean off the wand in between uses sometimes especially as the uh, the little older it gets but when it's at its freshest and when it just dries out just that little bit to where it's like a perfect formula for mascara it's a wonderful mascara to use but after a couple of weeks it starts to dry out and clump up like crazy so i think i'm done purchasing l'oreal paradise mascara the other one that i've got here is a benefits roller lash this is a mini little sample that came i think with one of my feel unique um purchases and actually this is the first time that I've used a Benefit mascara and I really enjoyed it. Um, this really, really separated out my lashes. The only thing I wish that it did was curl my lashes and hold that curl a little better. But for separating and giving some lengths to the lashes, this is a great mascara. And I'll be looking into Benefit ma uh, mascaras because I've heard so much about them, but it's just something that I've... I don't know i just always always i tend to gravitate more towards drugstore mascaras i have a few high-end ones that i do dip and dabble into but mainly low-end mascaras is what i stick to i think that's one of the sacrifices i make for buying like high-end eyeshadows subconsciously <laughs> um i've got loads of lipsticks here three of them are Steelers liquid lipsticks and these came in like a little trio that i bought um gosh when did i buy these i bought these in december of 2018 i believe so they're well old, you know they're over a year old but i used them up in i think by i think by this spring i was done with these they come in these really really pretty nude shades so you've got a classic patina shade you've got perla and you've also got sorrenta this shade is way too light for me but i still used it up and used to like mix and match the two together and then patina i've got in a larger size which is actually getting old and sorrenta is also like a deep almost like a this shade this kind of lip shade that i've got on today like a rosy more rosier version of this Steelers liquid lipstick is a great liquid lipstick formula if your lips are not dehydrated so when i did have good lip days i would use these a lot and i really enjoyed them 
another very nostalgic product that I am getting rid of because I've used it all up. This is the Maybelline lipstick and I think this is in the shade 27 Toffee and it is so old. Can I get some out? Yeah, it's like a bronze rose shade with like some bronze tones running through it this i mean look how broken and battered this is this used to be my mom's lipstick actually and when i started getting into makeup she gave this to me and i used to use it i used it all up i haven't haven't i think i used this up at the start of this year but i've had it for years and years and it's just one of those shades that got me into nude lipsticks it wasn't the most flattering because it's like a rosy bronze shade but i mean it, it did the job and it got me interested into nude shades and of course we all know how that went with um nude lipsticks i bought a thousand of them <laughs> so this is a product that i love and maybelline formula for lipsticks is something that is just so tried and true i feel like everybody at some point in their life has owned a maybelline lipstick um talking of drugstore products this is a rimmel eyeliner this is their gosh they, the name's rubbed off i actually have a fresh one here um, so this is the Wonder Swipe 2-in-1 Liner to Shadow and it's in the shade Cool AF. So this is a great colourful. It looks sort of purpley there. I wonder if any will come off. Yeah, it looks kind of purpley but it's actually like a mauve blue, like a royal blue. And at work, I used to wear this all the time. Just a little lick of blue liner. It's something different from the traditional black liner and everybody used to compliment me at work when i put this on my eyes they'd always be like oh your eyeliner matches your uniform and um, it looks really nice it's very non-traditional from a standard black liner so i like implementing color like that on an everyday basis into my looks because i am at heart a colorful girl but also i think i'm a good mix of colorful and neutral really but when i'm at work and i wanted a bit of color i would put blue liner on and i really like this rimmel um formula i have other shades i've got a green and a gold i don't use them as often but the blue really really worked for work and the formula was just about fluid enough to where it made it a perfect formula that you could work with you did have to apply a couple of layers like one or two layers just to make it opaque enough but when it dried down it stayed down and i repurchased that obviously i have a fresh one sitting there one concealer that I've used up is a Revolution Super Size Conceal and Define. This is in the shade C6.5. I actually, this is not the correct shade for me. This is way too light. I wonder if there's any, yeah, there's some still in there. Tiny, tiny bit in there. This is way too light for me, but when that whole bright under eye trend was in, this was what I was using uh, on top of a deeper um concealer shade just to lighten up my concealer but i've now found a shade from the masses of revolution concealers that actually suits me and it's c7 this is in the actual um conceal and hydrate formula which is okay it's it's all right it does the job but this concealer i loved i think i like the conceal and define concealer a lot it's a nice matte coverage concealer um and it's just the shades the shades are so difficult with revolution i find to find the right shade for you because there's so many different different shades and undertones um it's just really difficult to get it right i think and then oh i have two more products one was hiding at the edge of the box so one is an eye primer which i used up this year this is the bourgeois eye primer and it's eyeshadow base i think it's 24 hour eye primer i think the 24 is rubbed off of it but great eye primer drugstore price absolutely loved it did the job and it kept makeup on for a very very long time when it got to about the 12 or 13 mark it did start to crease on me but i mean i was running up and down a very busy hospital ward so for it to stand true and tried for that it is an mvp and i did like this when i run out of my urban decay um base i will probably repurchase this because i enjoyed it a lot and then last but not least is a duo eye glue this is i think this is a black the black one strip glass adhesive i think it's a black one um i enjoyed this but i think i was getting fed up with duo formula and i just wanted to experiment with some other lash glues i found that this took ages to dry and also it was quite wet actually the formula i like a bit more of 
a lash formula that doesn't take so long to dry and the one that i'm currently using and actually almost out of as well is the Shu Uramura lash glue adhesive this is amazing great great lash adhesive so i if you're struggling if you're someone who doesn't really jam quite that much with duo lash glue adhesive the Shu Uramura one is absolutely great i get it off of yes style so that's where i get lots of my korean brand makeup from but anyway guys those are the products that I've hit pan on and also the products that I have used up. Let me know down below which products that you've hit pan on or that you've used up as well because I'd be interested to know. It really, I think, it tells something when you've used makeup up. People don't realise how long it takes to go through makeup and this is makeup that I've had for quite a few years bar the Anastasia palettes um, it's makeup that I've had for a long time and it does take time to use up and it really does when you look back on products like these it really helps you reflect on how much makeup you purchase and actually do you need that much makeup are you going through it that quickly I mean face products like foundation and concealer you probably go through a bit more often but products like eyeshadow highlighter bronzer things like that takes a long time to go through so it's a good reflective practice i think but anyway guys that is the end of the video let me know that you liked it by giving it a thumbs up and i shall catch you guys all in the next one